Good evening, Majid. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? It's the question I always ask every person I'm interviewing. Yes, absolutely nailed it. Majid. All right, perfect. Thank you for taking the time to discuss together a little bit about your journey as a developer. Uh, the first question I ask always, or the second question after about the, the pronunciation of your name, is just to give us an intro about yourself. So you have the choice. You can use three words, three numbers, or anything that you'd like. It's just a suggestion to go through with uh, three words or three numbers. Go ahead. Okay, I, I think I found this question sometimes the most difficult questions, right? It's, it's sometimes hard to introduce yourself, but let me try. So my name is Majid. I am a Google developer expert for Flutter and Dart and a passionate software engineer, a community leader, in, especially in Flutter community. And I do a lot of contribution to different communities, particularly the most important one, Flutter community. So I've been developing software for years, uh, over 10 years. And I'm happy to share my knowledge from time to time by different approaches, from video tutorials, from blogs, from, you know, um, talks and things like that. And, and that's me. I'm here with you right now. Perfect. Thank you. For those who don't know, I will post a link in the description of the video as to what a Google developer expert is. Uh, it may sound obvious to you and to others, but not everyone is aware of all the programs that Google offers to developers. Thank you for being a GDE, by the way. But today you're actually here because one of your content pieces uh, has been selected. You've submitted something to the dev library um, and the, this blog post was selected. Specifically, it's about authentication uh, of a Flutter app. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? Uh, I believe you, you start with an intro distinguishing uh, the, making a distinction between authentication and authorization to make sure people are not confused, and then you go into the details. It's a very in detail, step by step guide for authentication. Do you want to talk a little about a little bit about this blog post? Sure, absolutely. Um, well, th that is actually, as you said, it's a very comprehensive blog about authentication and authorization, particularly pointing OAuth uh, 2.0 and OpenID Connect and. I started to writing these blogs because, well, I couldn't find anything like very comprehensive about this. And I found that Flutter developers particularly are from time to time struggling to understand what's going on, right? Why? Like, usually you see an article that says, oh, add this package, you know, install this uh, package and then add these URLs and everything will work. But then you don't understand how. And that was the intention behind this article. I started to go deeper and, and, and explain about the protocol, the different ways that you can make this, you know, protocol to work, and then how to implement it in your application. And also on top of that, how to leverage the, you know, role-based and permission-based, you know, solution on the application, how you can, you know, implement that in your application. So this was the idea behind, uh, you know, uh, the, the article, which I think ended up being over uh, five series or five articles in one series, series. And I think I wrote around, I don't, I don't remember exactly, last time I counted, it was like a mini book, <laughs> let's say, around, I counted on, on uh, the Google, uh, Google Doc, which I was writing, and it was around 100 hundred something pages. It was like very comprehensive. Yeah. As I always say, we will put the link to your author page on Dev Library in the description of this video. So you'll be able anyone who wants to consult the series can do so easily. What led you to Flutter in the first place? You could have done you know any other framework uh, or explore <laughs> any other framework. Have you considered other frameworks and why Flutter? Why not something yeah, else? Yeah. I actually was developing in different frameworks before Flutter, for sure. And uh, when this, the, this is a very long story. I just want to make it very short. Like at 2000, maybe 14, or like when Flutter was beta, um, 2017 something, I was, or 18, I was trying to find another alternative to Xamarin. And at that time, I was doing PhoneGap and Cordova. Those who have done Cordova, they know the pain. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I was trying to find out any alternative. I, I, know, I knew some uh, others. I worked with them. 
And then I found Flutter. And when I found Flutter, started to just following the setting up the environment. And it was like, wow. So in, in like five minutes, entire system was up and running and I was developing. And I had a hot feature, uh, uh, you know, in, in Flutter, which I was writing something or creating something in the application or my editor. And it was immediately appearing on my simulator. And I said, you know, I'm going to love this. I know this is going to win and I want to continue with this uh, framework. And in fact, that's the reason I'm here after maybe five years doing Flutter. And, and I'm still in love with Flutter and all of the features that it's providing to, to developers. What challenges did you face when exploring Flutter, if any? And how did you resolve these challenges? Maybe it was to do with documentation or examples or code samples. Anything that you remember uh, in your journey over the past five years where you felt that was a hurdle and this is how I, I overcame it? Yeah, that's a very good question. In the beginning, well, uh, many, many, you know, technologies are coming and they don't have like big communities around them, right? So in fact, the ecosystem is not mature enough. So I found that a little bit challenging in the beginning. So there was, there were not many like good plugins or packages, you know, what I did in the beginning, I started to write uh, and, you know, try to learn more and write more and educate more developers and somehow enable them to create more for Flutter ecosystem. And I also did myself, like I had packages, examples, GIST, and, you know, things like that, which is, at that time, it was very hard to find them. These days, well, if you search, you find a lot of them. But I think promoting those content in the early stages um, uh, was uh, probably very in like challenging for me. Um, and also writing them because, well, you needed to realize the entire things to write something about it. Whereas these days you go and, and probably read some articles. The documentation is very nice and comprehensive. And then you understand it better. But at that time, I had to even read the source code of Flutter to understand what's going on right now, you know. So this was the challenges in the beginning. But hopefully, I think this is uh, somehow resolved and we have very good content right now in the community and also packages like I think uh, the Flutter ecosystem is pretty mature right now. If you were to start today or if you were to give a piece of advice to a developer who's starting fresh with Flutter today, what would you tell them? Where should they get started? It's a very good question. I get this question. Um, many times, especially when I go to different communities and they ask like, how should I start? Where should I look at? To me, even if you are very fresh, like you have no programming, absolutely no programming, you know, knowledge, then still um, coming to Flutter is, is okay. Some people say that you have to go and read, like learn Dart, the language, and then come to the Flutter. I'd say maybe not. Maybe you, sh you can start learning Flutter slowly. And while you're learning the, you know, uh, the, the framework, you can also learn the language as you go. And, you know, so you can build the stuff and you enjoy as well. The, the first point to start probably is Flutter documentation. So there is a very nice step uh, by step guide to how to set up your environment and, you know, how to manage uh, different packages, how to add, you know, things like that. So th there is a, there are very good uh, documentation uh, on Flutter uh, pop.dev, uh, sorry, uh, Flutter documentation that you can see. And another thing that I can tell you is uh, most likely, well, if you search on Google right now, there are a lot of, you know, uh, videos out there uh, from from the GDEs, Google Developer Experts and Googlers, the Flutter YouTube channel is one of them. And your libraries, in fact, might be one of them right now. Just filter Flutter, probably look at those, you know, um, libraries, uh, those articles. So, but to me, starting from Flutter documentation, step-by-step -step guide is probably where you need to start with Flutter. And then slowly move on and then, you know, expand your, um, not from documentation, but to 
uh, other channels such as Flutter YouTube channel and, you know, other uh, trusted uh, people from the community. Conversely, what is the worst piece of advice that you've heard in our industry, in the tech industry? Is this something that when you hear it, when you read it, it makes you feel, no, this is wrong. This is absolutely not correct. Is there anything like that? Um, I think uh, sometimes I hear that people say it's not possible. I have a mindset that I said everything is possible. It just takes time and, well, maybe a little bit of cost and money and <laughs> so so to my opinion it's very worse advice to tell to someone oh you cannot learn this oh you know oh this is hard for you or you i i i think this is very bad advice everything is possible you can do that you can do anything because i have done it the other people that have done it then probably you can do it as well it's just the skill that you need to occur so um to my opinion then this is the worst probably advice. Do not listen to these advice. Just always think that everything is possible and you can do it. You told me before we chatted uh, officially on this uh, video recording that you have an international background, that you speak three languages. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the importance of having impact locally? Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, there are sometimes I feel like in the community, people think like if they provide only English, you know, let's say as a like an international language uh, content, well, they will reach out to different people and, you know, they will have impact. Look, I have different opinion here. I, I, I provide a lot of English content for sure. Um, but I also I'm also very active in my local communities, like in, in Norway, for example, where I live and, and, you know, in other languages that I know, for example, Persian. So sometimes it's not really important about how wide you go. It's important about how impactful you are. Like, imagine you are going for a small community, you're providing some content and you're helping 10 people to uh, make their life better. Whereas you do the same thing for like global audiences and well, probably no one even cared because well, the competitors over there are a lot, right? There are lots of those contents. You may not even get to reach, uh, let's say to those audiences that you are targeting. So to my opinion, then, so it's important to start from your local community, get Get to know them. If you know, like if you're coming to Flutter, where, what is the Flutter, where is the Flutter uh, local meetup? Where is uh, the place in your local community? Like Google Developer Group, right? GDGs. Like, can I go there and ask about like contribution? Can I, I contribute there? Can I help um, developers in my local community to learn Flutter? And, and you know, the other things. This is going to be impactful. And slowly... When you build up this network and community, then you can come up and then produce because you gain, uh, let's say, experience. You have done impactful, you know, um, things for your community. You learn a lot, then you can come and even have more impact than on a global, let's say, um, stage. So that's my opinion for sure. You mentioned possibly joining a local meetup or a developer group. Uh, do you have any any thoughts or any piece of advice for uh, engineers or developers who may feel a bit shy? I know, for, uh, you know, may not come across, but I'm a bit of an introvert at times, and I may, I may yeah, find yeah. it difficult to engage in a social setting, even though I may have skills to share or things to learn from others. Do you do you have any piece of advice based on your experience or observations that could help someone who feels that way to actually take that step of looking up? the local meetup, the local community, because they probably would have a lot of impact, but they can't even do the first step of contacting or going there. Yeah, well, this is a very good question. So you're asking this question from an extrovert person. <laughs> so <laughs> I never had this problem, to be honest. In fact, I had one problem in the beginning. I can share that experience. So five years ago, when I started to like uh, contributing, I had a hard time to find out where or who should I contact, right? And um, one thing that I realized is, well, 
I can go to GDGs, as you said, and local meetups and find the community leaders and contact them. You may get an answer or may not. One thing I learned here is that if you have like, if you decide, even if you are introvert, if you decide that you want to do something, then you will go out of your comfort zone a bit and then you can find a way to present yourself anyway. So, right? So many of these people that are introvert, I feel, I, I've, never be, I've never been, but I've been with introvert people. I feel like they always think they are not good enough, maybe, or they are not very well, uh, they are not a person that can very well explain, let's say, or even communicate. In fact, that's not correct, right? The initial communication probably is the problem, maybe. Again, correct me here, Sebastian, if I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, I feel, so if you decide, have a little bit of discipline, say, oh, I want to do this, I need to do that, and then reach out with a proper plan, you will probably find someone that helps you uh, to uh, get into the community. And the next thing that I learned is, it's very important you find a mentor. So uh, someone that can help you to get yourself from out of your comfort zone and, you know, help you to uh, promote you for doing what you are afraid of doing, probably. Finding a mentor also is very, very important, I believe. Thank you for your insights. I have two more questions, two quick questions for you. One is, what makes you excited going forward? Are there any piece of it, technology that you are keen to experiment with? Maybe it's related to Flutter, maybe not. Maybe it's un unrelated. Anything that you have in mind that you're thinking, oh, I can't wait to play with this, whether it's released or not? Well, the technology you mentioned, yes, there are a lot of technologies that I want to play around for sure. Um, and one of them is I still have not done like quite a lot with and I really want to do is maybe ML and AI. So I really want to get my, you know, hand and knowledge uh, going a little bit in depth to these technologies. So that's one thing I definitely want to do. What would be the final words that you'd have for developers? Anything you'd like to share with fellow developers or beginner developers? We talked a little bit uh, about the topic, but any final few words you'd like to share with developers out there? Sure. I have probably four things that I can share, and I learned it over my career. The first thing that I can tell you is, well, as I told you in, the, in this interview, everything is possible. So to do, to do what you are going to do, you need to have probably four things, and that's what I'm going to share with you. One thing is try to practice, practice, and practice. So, so by practicing, you definitely can learn more. Second is try to have discipline. Set up a discipline for your career, for your skills. Like set what you want to do and stick to that. And third one is consistency. Try to be consistent. If you're learning something, consistency learn, consistently learn that thing. And, you know, have a like schedule, program something for yourself. And then at the end, and the most important one, do not give up. <laughs> so if you don't give up and have the rest of the things that I mentioned, you definitely reach your goal and whatever you need, hopefully. I love your four points. Discipline, sorry, you said practice, discipline, practice. consistency, and don't give up. That's it. Love you it. You will nail it. Thank you very much, Majid, for your time and for your insights. Thank you very much for having me.